So these are the tools that I use. This is my hook blade for going down the length of the beaver when I make my first open cut. Fur comb, I use a coarse, uh, it's a horse brush actually, but it's a, it's a comb. And then this is the dog slicker brush that I use. And of course you want a, a beaver knife and then a knife for uh, cutting around the legs and the vent hole and whatnot. So those are the main tools that I use for my beaver when I'm rough skinning. So welcome back to another Gibbs Adventures. And tonight, uh, Casey and I are going to skin beaver. So I'm going to skin a big one to kind of give her the idea, the lowdown. And then she's got another smaller beaver that she's going to skin here in a second. So you ready to go, Case? Maybe. <laughs> so I'm going to mess up, but... Oh, well. That's how we learn. So the first thing you always want to do with a beaver is brush them out with a fur comb. And I use a dog slicker brush. And I brush it. I much always prefer to dr the skin dry beaver than, than a wet one. And uh, the reason for that is because it's so much easier. They dry faster. And a lot easier for somebody's skin. So then the next thing you want to do is have a couple of different knives. This is the one that I like. Point at one. And it takes a little uh, practice to master to get the, uh, the proper joint like that. Take the front legs off, take the back legs off. And another trick I try to do with my knife is to always keep it inside the, the skin instead of cutting across the hair. Some guys will take their knife and they carve on the outside. And the, all that hair does is just dull your knife. So I try to keep my knife on the inside. After you've done a few, you get pretty good at it. So there's kind of a method. I take the four feet off first, then I split it right here in the center of the tail up to the, the vent. I'm not going to remember all of this. Oh, I'll, I'll have to. I'll coach you. Tell me, yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful around the vent because that's where the caster is, and you don't want to nick into the caster. And uh, I go right around the tail here with the knife. Again, I'm always trying to keep my knife into the fur. Once we have it prepped around the vent and everything, then I run my knife backwards and make the hair stand up to get a kind of a line. And if I don't like it, I can wipe it out and start over. And it just gives me a general idea of where I'm gonna run my hook knife. So you, it's just a hook knife like this. I grab it up here by the lip. And this is just a regular roofer hook is really what it is. And I keep it on a bit of an angle. And I usually always stop at about an inch in front of the, or a couple inches in front of where I'm gonna connect and finish it off with my knife. And you can see, it does a pretty good job. I try not to get too overzealous with it because sometimes it guts it and then you got a, a really messy beaver to deal with. But there you can see it opens up the beaver to the length. And that's all I use that knife for. I switch knives, I go from having a pointed knife to what we call a beaver knife. A beaver knife has a rounded blade like this. I turn it sideways a little bit. And I just start and I, I'm a rough skinner so what rough skinning means is that you're basically just peeling the hide off of the beaver and you're not really concerned about getting every little piece of meat and fat off it becomes when you do a beaver this way it becomes like a three-step process meaning that 
you, you, you uh, rough skin it. And then the next step is to flesh it. And then the final step is to beam it, uh, is to put it on the board. Almost no matter what with a beaver, and I've done a few thousand probably, easily, it takes roughly an hour to do a beaver, per beaver. And it doesn't really matter the size so much. I mean, of course, big ones take a little longer than the, the smaller ones, but it just takes that much time because There's a lot of steps involved with beavers, and they're always a lot of work. And the reason for that is like you, even when you finish a beaver, you're still going to spend time after taking it off the board, brushing it a final time, and uh, putting it in a fur bag. Like I tell people, it's, it's 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 really easy to put 40 Martin in a bag. You put 40 Beaver in a fur bag and you can't even pick the freaking thing up. So there's nothing really easy about Beaver. Hence my comment there on my snaring video that it's good to have a strong back and a weak mind. Okay, so see how I got the two legs out? Now I always try to finish my Beaver so that the head's here and the pelt's falling over the edge of the table. Got a little bit of blood going there. Let's take a piece of paper towel in here so it doesn't bleed all over the place for now. I try to control my blood all the time because if you don't, you get blood all over the place. So I'm just basically grabbing the beaver fur and I'm pulling it off. It's a nice beaver. This is a nice beaver. What do you do with the tail? Well, beaver tails can be used for the leather. Um, some guys make uh, um, you can make wallets out of them. I used to have a years ago. I used to have a pair of cowboy boots that were made from beaver tail by Boulay Boots, and I uh, I've often looked to see if I could get another pair, but I've never. Never been ever really able to uh, find them again, and I've looked, and I guess they probably stopped making them. But they lasted me a very long time. I've seen keychains made from beaver tails, all kinds of little novelty stuff. Uh, probably the most common that most guys are familiar with, most folks are familiar with, would be the beaver tail wallets. And that market, it's not you know is off and on sometimes. Right now, I don't know of any orders for any, so I haven't been saving the tails. But it's definitely something that can have value on a beaver tail, or on a beaver is the tail. So there's the gland, the caster gland, there's the oil sac. Oil sacs don't really have a commercial use so much as, the, uh, as they do for making lure. If you're making your own lure, using an oil sac uh, helps out sometimes. Gives it a gives your lure a little bit of a smell to it. Helps float it. I'm just trying to get the other leg out here. Okay, so when I get it here, I use a cable and I hook it around the back leg here like so. And that gives me something to really pull hard on. And then I'm able to really go along and finish off my beaver. So having that leg like that is like an extra set of hands. Or an extra hand, I should say, not hands. you can see I can keep quite a bit of pressure on it and I can really get my beaver to where I want it to be 
So again, I'm not worried about how much I leave on the the pelt as long as I don't put a hole in it. That's kind of the end game here. Okay, so the caster gland, these are the oil sacs, and right in front of them is the hole. So there's the vent hole. The oil sacs are right there. The caster is right behind it, and I go up above it a bit, make an incision. It's a male. There's his whip. Okay, and then I'm always trying to uh, to get the caster out with any real meat on it. Caster glands are used as a food additive, and it's also used very heavily in the perfume industry. So you you ladies are uh, when you're putting your dab of perfume on, it's probably got some caster in it because casters are really good uh, amplifier in it. And there you go, set of casters. I dry them like that for a couple of days until they get casey and they want them brown they don't want them black that's the main thing the whole idea is just to get the the pelt off the carcass and uh, the reason I started off as a clean skinner so I would meticulously skin and make sure there was no meat left on the skin itself, no no fat, no meat. And then one time, when I was a younger man, I was trapping with my friend Andre, and uh, we had 17 beaver to skin, and he got a call and he had to go out of town. So in those days, it would take me probably an hour just to clean skin a beaver. And I looked at all those beavers on the floor, and I said, there's no way that I'm gonna spend two days here skinning beaver so I became a rough skinner then. I can still clean skin if I want to, but generally speaking, I don't. Now, if you notice what I've done here now, remember I said I wanted to have the, the, the head of the beaver down at this end of the table? I got my hand underneath case and I'm kind of pulling it. You make it look really easy, but I know that it's not. <laughs> well, it is, but I always tell people when they start skinning beavers, the first hundred are hard and then after that they get pretty easy because you're going to get a, a pattern and a method and you know, you figure it out. Now usually when I get to this stage, I switch back from my rounded knife to my my uh, pointed knife because there's a lot of bone in the head and you can quickly dull your knife. So I figure I might as well use a knife that I can sharpen easily to dull my good skin and knife. Nine times out of ten, if I'm going to put a hole in a beaver, it's usually around the head. I usually always tend to put a hole around the nose. Because it's basically one of the thinnest parts of the beaver. But you should, once you get comfortable at skinning beaver, it should take you about five minutes to, to rough skin a beaver. So there you go off. Stick it over here for now.